y'all don't mind, let's go back to a time we really used to have church. We used to have a good time, praising the Lord, the Spirit and in truth. I love them old church That old brother, song. pick up that old hymn book and Singing you knew exactly what he was going to say. Sisters got happy, folks start patting their feet, clapping their hands and singing. All of a sudden, he break off in a song, something like this. I believe that we serve a God, and there's just one person here, and I believe there's one person here this morning who came in here who was not a member of the Lord's church, never heard of the Church of Christ. And I believe that you'd be so impregnated with God's word that you leave here uh, saying, what must I do to be saved? Uh, and if you do, uh, make that confession. Uh, we, will, we will extend the right hand uh, out to you. Take your confession. We'll go baptize you. Uh, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, you leave out here a child of God. Amen. Uh, and have an opportunity to make heaven your own. Don't mean you'll be perfect. Don't mean everything will be correct in your life. But it does mean you got a Savior. Y'all ought to say amen. amen. That, you, that you got a Lord. Y'all ought to say amen. amen. That you got help in the midst of your trials. Amen. I don't know about you, but I need my help. Amen. Somebody amen. said, I look to the hills which cometh my help. Yes. Amen. My help cometh from the Lord. Mm -hmm. He will not suffer uh, our feet to be moved. Y'all ought to say yes. amen. He won't suffer. Y'all ought to say amen. God will not suffer you to be moved. Yeah. If you move, you move because you want to be moved. But when you know God like I know God, you know no matter how tough things get, just keep your hand in the master's hand and everything is going to be all right. Y'all right. Amen. Right. Amen. I want to talk to you about one of my favorite songs uh, that I found contextual in the Bible. Uh, one of my favorite songs and getting to be one of my favorite uh, artists, uh, Meek Mills. Amen. And, and uh, I want to talk to you about all eyes on me. All eyes on us. Yeah, look at that. Look at the head. It's all eyes. All eyes on us. That's right. All eyes on us. Amen. All eyes on us. And I want to show you that in the text. And I want to show you why folk are looking at Uptown Church of Christ. I want to show why folk are looking at you on your job like they're looking at you. Amen. I want to show you why you're looking at folk like you're looking at folk. Amen. Amen. I want to show you that. And I want to show you that. Look at the text, if you will. Uh, and, and we want to thank Brother Chuss for reading to our hearings. Uh, but he described, he reads into our hearings uh, from the book of First Samuel chapter 18. Starting at verse number 6. And I want to show you how there was a king by the name of Saul. And Saul uh, uh, becomes king in a vicarious way. Uh, he is in position, but he knows he's out of position. Have you ever had a manager or a person who's in a position, but he really knows that he just don't borrow time in that position? Man. Uh, he, 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 you, know, you don't have to do nothing. Saul knows that, that he was selected not because of his godliness. Uh, I, I believe this is the king that was tall and handsome. This, this is the king that the people chose uh -huh. and not God. God, they didn't choose him because he prayed every day. They didn't, they didn't choose him because he, he sang songs of Zion. They didn't choose him because he helped folk. They didn't choose, but they chose him because he was a diamond. Well. That he was tall and light skinned or whatever color skin to them. And, and don't worry, nothing wrong with being light skinned. Don't hate that. That's good. You got you a good husband. You got your pretty boy over here. Amen. You, you got you a pretty boy. But, but you know, some folk like chocolate. Am I right? Amen. Amen. Some folk like chocolate. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Amen. Amen. And then your brothers will be back one day. You know, chocolate coming back. Uh, we just have to be patient. Where's the snipe with the jail? And, and, and they got in trouble. But, but we'll be back anyway. Amen. Amen. Y'all got some pretty girls. That's good. But chocolate coming back. Y'all ought to say amen. As a matter of fact, the number one candy boy being sold is that 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 that, that Hershey Oreo uh, 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 candy boy because it has the, the Oreo in it and the, and the white chocolate. Y'all ought to say amen. We go together. All right, amen. We, we, should, we ought to be together. Uh, but, but, and sisters, you can relate to this because they, they saw a tall person in stature. And assume that height meant his aptitude for God. Yeah. They saw broad shoulders and assumed that he would protect them. They saw someone who looked good and, 
and thought he was secure within himself. Yeah. And haven't you seen folk who look good on the outside yeah. Yeah. or a mess yeah. on the inside? Yeah. Or she look good, but all she wants is your money. Y'all, I say amen. Yeah. Right. He look good, but he ain't no good. Right. And so they, 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 they chose Saul. And from the very beginning, God told, man, should that Saul knew that his time was in the text opens up and, and when you and, and here's something here's what you see when you when you when, when when you're doing something you know that you really wasn't selected to do then you you get very insecure about everybody that's around you yeah. and you you get crazy yeah. you become jealous <laughs> you become envious yeah. you, you become concerned you're afraid of everybody but 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 magnify that by 20 percent by 100 percent when the person who is anointed come into the picture. Y'all are saying amen. When somebody who comes into the picture with the anointing of God in his life, you know it and everybody else know it. And you show up getting there. Am I right about it? Okay, let's look at the text. Let's look at the Watch this. The Bible says, uh, and it came to pass. If they came, uh, when it came to David, he returned from the slaughter. Uh, David uh, is anointed by God because he is the son of Jesse. And the bloodline of Christ would come through the son of Jesse. Y'all all right? Man. Now, not Jesse over here. <laughs> Jesse wasn't born yet. Uh, but his grandpa was Jesse. And God had prophetically said that Christ would come through the bloodline of Jesse. And, and so David is born, and David is not handsome, he is not tall. In fact, some uh, describe him as that he was a short-rooted person. Uh, uh, had been a, he was a fields person, and, and, and God is using him, and God has anointed him, and God has selected him, and not Saul. And, and, and Saul trying to figure out who is going to take my place, because I'm the king, and here comes David from the slaughter. And David and I went out there, look, man, and I don't have the hut here, and I slaughtered up some folks. And the people are cheering for David, and the people are shouting for David, and they said, Saul has his thousands, but David has his ten thousand. And how do you feel? Y'all know y'all can relate to Saul because when you see somebody do something better than you can do it, sometimes it mess you up. Y'all are, y'all are, y'all are telling the truth. When you see somebody that's showing up preaching and you struggling trying to read scripture, it can mess you up. Y'all are telling the truth. When somebody can wear that skirt better than you can wear that skirt, it can mess you up. When somebody, sometimes we get jealous and offended and upset because God has blessed somebody else better than he blessed you instead of just being thankful for what you got and who you yeah. are. We'll lose yes. our mind looking at everybody else. I, I, y'all, y'all, I, 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 I ain't got nobody to be honest with you today. And, y'all, and, and, and most of the time, folks that deny, uh, and, and everyone here felt jealousy sometimes. Tell the truth. Y'all, I tell the truth. Y'all see somebody, and that's their gift, but that's their gift. There ain't nothing you can do about it. Amen. 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 And the text says that, that as they were shouting, Saul started reasoning with himself. He started looking. He said to himself, These people are ascribed to David. They see. What I can see. The problem is, David don't see what they see. Church, this morning, the reason folk are looking at you like they're looking at you, because they can see the anointing God has in your life. And they know as soon as you can see, you're going to be somebody special. In the San Diego area. David don't see. How you know David don't see it? I'm glad that you asked this question. Skip with me over, over here to verse number uh, verse number 18 and listen to what David said because what happened was is that David, uh, in order to in order to quiet the folk down and to appease David, because he didn't want David to be king, but he can't stop it because God has it under control. In order to stop that, he said, well, you can marry my daughter. And then, and then, and then, and then, and then once he gave him his daughter, somebody else married his daughter. He was happy to spot a married daughter. But David don't understand that the king was he is. You're not really giving me anything. I'm just being humble enough to, to, to wait to see what God's going to do. And in verse 18, he says to Saul, who am I to marry your daughter? You a king. And who is my father? And what am I to Israel? David, you are the king of Israel. Yeah. David, you are yeah. God's chosen. David, you are God's anointed. Yeah. I know you looking at yourself right now saying, who am I to think like this? Who am I to feel like this? You are God's child. Yeah. You are God's anointed. God has his hand on. How do you know I'm God? Because you have been through so much hell and been one for the fact that the anointing of God was in your life. You would have been dead a long time ago. Yeah. You are somebody in Christ. And the only reason you look crazy because you don't even know the anointing that's in your life. If you knew the anointing that's been working in your life, you would stand up and 
what you got. Be seated, be seated, be seated. You didn't get to where you got by yourself. You got to where you got in spite of the sorrows that you met in your life. Don't you know Saul tried to kill David? Don't you know folk that tried to kill my ministry? Don't you know folk that lied on me and talked about me like they did David and Jesus? Don't you know folk that tried to stop you on your job? Don't you know if you walk in the room, folks see your anointing and start rolling their eyes and start complaining? Who do you think he is? I am somebody! You ask, you ask somebody, did it? you a favor? Let me tell you something. Out of one billion men on this earth, when I walked up the kill one day, and I walked in that door looking dumb, fresh to death, smelling good, wearing some of that Dolce and You know, when I was young, I didn't walk to him. I walked up to him, and I stepped to him like, you know how you know, I stepped to him like a real G. Hey, the godly man. And I said, baby, put me on your things to do list. Ah, oh, y'all are saying me. Like that. That's free. I'm right there now. I'm right there now, man. That's free. Hey! And all the folks she went with, guess who got the phone number? All right. Hey! Hey! Y'all are saying me. It's not by accident that you where you are. You where you are because God gifted you. Y'all are saying me. And until you start living your life like you gifted, the haters and the sorrows in your life will always have power in your life that you won't think well of yourself. But I stop by the tell you, Saul and the rest of y'all will go straight to the of hell because I am somebody in Christ Jesus. Amen. Uh, so, so they said, who am I? Who am I? I can marry. Y'all see the text? Verse says, who am I that I can walk up to Barack Obama's door? If you know that you know that God has put something in you, I don't care who you are. You, you can do anything that God has put in front of you. Amen. You can slay your 10,000 while focusing on them, and there's nothing wrong with feeling good about yourself. Amen. I don't care what Saul said. Saul threw a gathering at that man's head. Saul tried to kill him over and over. Saul hunted him down. Why Saul hit him? Saul hit him because of the anointing that's in his life. You know why I don't get mad and get upset? Folk that hate me because of the anointing that's in my I don't need paper to preach a sermon. I don't need to sit around and read stuff off the internet. I just need the spirit of God and the anointing of God. And I can preach. Uh, and so, so the first point is that sometimes the enemy know the anointing on you and you don't realize the anointing on you. And you spend your time fighting with folk and arguing with folk and folk messing with me and you all on Facebook counteracting with folk and they just mad and all they're doing is confirming that they see something in you. Because folk don't mess with folk, they don't see nothing in you. Folk, when they, those people on the assignment from the devil himself and you have to make up your mind how much energy you're going to give them in your life. Y'all ought to say amen. amen. Because the devil knows the anointing that's in y'all life. Y'all all right? Wow. All right? Let's well, right, so look at the Bible. Let me buy very quickly. So point number one is that the enemy knows who your anointing before you know your anointing. Mark chapter 12 and verse number 5. You'll find that the text teaches just like Saul knew who David was before David knew what God was going to do with him. The, the devils know the anointing in your life. That's why I tried to kill you at age 14. That's why I tried to impregnate you when you was a teenager. That's why I tried to kick you out. That's why I had all this forces talk about you when you was in school. That's why folk thought you was weird and odd. That's why folk laugh at you. That's why folk don't support you. They won't do it because they see the anointing in your life and they want to make you believe a lie. Man, man. Listen, listen, listen to this. Listen to Mark 12, verse 5. Now these are the devils speaking. The devil speak to Christ. Before his disciples knew who he was, the devil already knew who Christ was. Right. <sighs> but y'all missed that. Y all, y all, y all miss that. <laughs> before his disciples, before Christians, before potential Christians knew who Christ was, the devil already knew who he was. <laughs> You know why you went through what you went through? Because he knows what you're going to be. Man. Here's, a, here's a power. This is a shout point right here. This is why you ain't got to wear it. Because he has no power Amen. to stop you. Amen. I know you I know you called over the brother so-and-so and had us put out of the building and told your life and this and whatever you're doing. I know you thought you were going to stop us, but you don't have that power, y'all. I'm saying Amen. Spread up 
to some swines and, 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 and go to some swines and enter into them. Jesus said, go. Go on into the swine. He ran them off a cliff. But what are you saying, preacher? I'm saying that the swines represent people of uh, uh, uncleanliness. Swine represents uh, ungodliness. Uh, swine represent folk who are outside of the kingdom of God. Uh, what are you saying? I'm saying that sometimes when folk are messing with me, I tell them, you better go get some swine out in this world than to put your hand on the anointing of God. Amen. For it had been better for you to wrap a millstone around your neck uh, than to ever try to put your mouth on the man of God. Uh, before you get your eyes on me, get to look at me crazy, you better understand who my father is. You better mess with a pig than my master brother had with y'all. Amen. 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 And guess what? It's the same thing with you. That they better mess with a pig, a wild boar, than to put their head and their mouth on you. If you walk in with Jesus, y'all ought to say amen. They know, they know who you are. They know who you are. They, they know. Folk know, I, I had folk tell me, it's something about the way you walked into the room. Uh, it was just something about you. Because I don't just walk into a room where I go to work. I, I walk with authority. The authority that God gave me. I talk with, I don't drop my head when I'm talking. I don't walk around and drop that. Do you think I'm going to use some water? Yes, I'm master. I don't, I'm going to the restroom. And, and I might not say that. I'm grown. I'm, I'm old enough to go to the restroom without asking you. If you're going to be a child of God, you have to be a bold child of God. The end of this job is to make you think you are not anointed, but you are all anointed. You know why you're anointed? Because you were baptized into the body of Christ. Yeah. Your marriage is anointed. Yeah. When some heifer start messing with your bull, you tell that heifer to go back to our own pastor in the name of Jesus. You know what I'm You want to say, heifer? Don't help me. I say, heifer. Go back. To your past and leave my bull alone yeah. in the name yeah. of Jesus. You don't let no heifer mess with your bull. Make a hamburger out of it. Sell it to make them. Y'all I'm saying, you're trying to help somebody. You have the anointing of God in your life. Hey, now listen to me. You got to know no heifer have authority over your house. God gave you the anointing over your house. I wish a bull would call my house. I left the phone. Yes, bull. How can I help? What can I speak to? You, you can speak to her sister, Miss 38. You can speak to her brother, Mr. 45. And I can put you on the calendar with 33. Amen. You, you don't just come and you, you can't take what's mine. God did. Saul was trying to take what? The kingdom from who? From David, even if he had to do what? Yeah. Kill him. That's the devil's job. But Christ, Christ had the anointing on who? David. David. And David said, you're not, you're, not, you're not gonna kill me. I can kill you, but I got more respect because God allows you to be in that position. Oh, wow. And church, you know, that's a scary point because when you understand the anointing power of God, you don't just mention anybody. I don't care what you think about it. Listen to Luke chapter 1, verse 22. Even the angels know the anointing of all mankind. You are anointed individual. They know it. You might not know it, but the angels know it. Mary did not know. The angel came to Luke 1, and verse 22, just wave your hand when you get there. Say amen when you get there. The angels came to Mary and said, Mary, what did they say to Mary? Mary what? Luke 1, what did Mary say? Yeah, yeah. 22, breathe. And when he came out. When he came? When he came out. All right. All right. And they perceived that he had seen a vision. All right. In the temple. That, 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 I, I loop. Is that Luke 122? Yeah. Oh, let me make sure. 128, I'm sorry. Oh. 128. Now, 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 now Saul, let me say, I got it, Saul. It's all right. I'm just a few up. 128, okay. All right. And that's what I want right there, sister, sister, mother. And who came? The angels. The angels did what? Came, came her. unto her. The angels came unto her. Now, so, some of y'all, I don't believe names. You better. You better. You better. Hebrews 13 and 4 says, uh, be careful not to forget to entertain strangers, for you haven't entertained an angel unaware. The Bible says an angel came under her, came under Mary. And what did the angel say? He said, hell thou. Hell. hell thou. And then he honored her. He said, hell, attention, hell, uh, you know, all, all eyes on you. All eyes on you. Saul is looking at David. Michelle is soon to be wife is looking at David, but she's only married him to bring him down. That's the only, the only she married him. Saul said, I'll let her marry him so 
she can distract him and I can kill him. The angel comes and says, Mary, what? You are what? Highly over me. God didn't do for Mary what he had done for you. Man. We are highly, highly faithful because we have an opportunity to build this work from the ground floor up. God don't let just anybody do that. To walk away from this work is not only foolish, but it's frightening. Amen. Because God entrusted us like he trusted Mary for when Christ was a baby to find somewhere for him to live, Amen. to take him around from city to city, to escape the death hands of Herod. He trusted her. He trusted Job to get past his insecurities, to get past his pride when he was going to put her away privately because the anointing was on Mary's life. He said, don't put that woman away because she's carrying the Son of God. He shall be called Emmanuel, God with us. And to sit Jesus down and to set him aside is not only frightening, but it's foolishness. When you have the anointing of God in your life. Y'all all right? Y'all all right? I'm trying, I'm trying to get through this now. There are folk on your job who know the anointing that God has in your life. And they're sitting back like Saul. They're waiting on you to follow. I, I've been around folk, but they're just sitting around waiting. On anything, they'll believe in it. Negative thing, they'll sit around, they'll spread. They just sit there, just waiting, cause they want you dead. They want you dead. And at the same time, they say they want to be with Jesus, but they want you dead. But I read in my Bible, for if a man hate his brother, how can he love God? Yeah. Uh, am I right about it? You can't love God and hate your brother. You can't wish death on my ministry and shout thank you Jesus somewhere else. You got to have a love. For Without dissimulation, without hypocrisy, you got to have a love that don't just shout for yourself, that'll shout for somebody else. Yeah. Right now, I don't want you to shout for me, but I want you to look around at somebody else. I don't want you to shout for what God is going to do in their life. Can't you shout right now? Yeah. Uh, I shout right now. Hey, you look to you. I want you to shout for what God going to do in your neighbor's life. God's getting ready to give them a job. God's going to bless the health and strength. God's going to bring them together. To finish this, I'll finish it next week. But they hate you not because you've done anything wrong. They hate you because they wish that you do something wrong and keep doing something wrong. They hate you because they see the favor that God has in your life. They hate you and they have their eyes on you, the Bible says, in the text that they saw begin to look at David from that point on. Uh huh. Once God showed his power, his might in your life, folk been staring at you in your family. Folk been looking funny at you on your job. People in the church don't understand you. Folk walking around second guessing you. They won't even clap when God do something for you. God bless you for something. They say it must have stolen. God lift you up out of a horrible ditch. You say it won't be long. Folk are doing it not because something wrong with you, but because of the anointing that God has in your life. And you ought to raise your hand up and say thank you, Jesus, for every song you ever met. Y'all want to go home? You need to stand up, raise your hand. Stand up, tell the devil's a lie. Raise your hand and say, God, God has something big. He's anointed your house. He's anointed your children. He's anointed your life. And that's enough for somebody to scream, thank you, Jesus, right now. Amen. I finish this lesson next week. I know we still have some more time, but I will give us some time to uh, congregate and talk. This time we're going to do what, what we're supposed to do, and that's extend the savings invitation. If you're not a member of the Lord's church, uh, and you're ready to, to receive him as your Savior, you do that by hearing the word of God. Romans 10, verse 17, so that faith come by hearing, hearing by the word of God. By believing what you hear, Mark 16, 16, that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, and he that believe not shall be damned. By confessing the sweetest name on mortal tongue, Matthew 10 and verse number 32, by, by putting them on in baptism, in the water of the grave for baptism, 
by 1 Peter chapter 3, 19 through 20, Romans chapter 6, 1 through 5, and uh, knowing this, that our old man is crucified here with him. Likewise, we are baptized with him into that burial of death. And like as Christ was raised up by the glory of the Father, he'll raise you up. If you allow folk to kill your spirit, to think that make you believe that you somebody else that you're not, you allow folk to make you think you're the tail instead of the head, I'm encouraging you to come and accept this anointing right now in your life through the water of grave of baptism. You had a heart, I don't care what you've been through, you wouldn't have got through if it wasn't for God. And you wouldn't have got through if it wasn't for the anointing of God in your life. Uh, you stop letting your mistake become your pathway. You stop letting your mistake become your stepping stone. Uh, that you're moving on to something higher. You lift your head up. Don't you worry about what folks say about you. Worry about what God is doing for you. What God is going to do through you. And you smile. You smile when it hurts you. Smile. Uh, look at your neighbor. Smile. Come in and brush your teeth. Look at him and smile anyway. Smile anyway. At least you got some teeth to show your other man. Smile anyway. 